There we go. So thank you, Coaching Out of the Box, Jennifer Anderson, PCC, and Karen Sadler, PCC, for joining us as our coaches today. I just wanted to start off a little bit just about why we're here today. There we go. Nope, you don't want me yet. Why we're here today. Coaching um, is amazing. As we all know, it's transformational, but live coaching in a short amount of time, it is very beneficial that our coaches and coaches today do not know each other. They do not know what the topics are. So it is very authentic and very in the moment. So each of our coaches today are going to have 20 minutes with our coaches in the session. After that, there will be a rapid fire debrief of five minutes after by the other coach. And then we're going to switch. So we're going to take a look and see what core competencies we can see in those moments, as well as the skills that they have. So really think about maybe if you're a coach in training, what you're working on right now, what you can see there, how listening and questioning really can affect the outcome of your session and the path that you go. And we will have time for a question and answer at the end. So please make note of that. And we do also have the chat there as well for you to put in your comments and questions. We will hold those to the end because we don't want to interrupt Jennifer and uh, Karen in the moment of their, of their coaching sessions. So there you go. There's me. I am here to answer any questions by email after the fact. My phone number is there. I'm on the website. I'd love to talk to you about your coaching path if you have any questions beyond today. And now we're going to jump right into Jen, Coach Jen. I believe, Jen, you prefer Jen, not Jennifer. Is that right? Did you want That's to That's right. Yep. On? Excellent. So I see you've got lots of uh, lots of history here, lots of development going on. Did you want to tell us a quick a little bit about you? Well, I will say that I'm humbled by having been a coach for 25 years. Um, that that anniversary is right on top of, of me now in, in January. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here because I see coaching as a grand adventure. And any any opportunity I have to be a coach to someone, to partner with them in this way, um, it's just an honor. And so I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to see what happens here today. Perfect. And I love that you're stepping in on this no history with uh, with Renee, who you'll be coaching today. I love that. So it's so authentic in that it can be real life and that yes. you don't know each other nor the topic. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And our other coach facilitator today is Karen Sadler. And Karen, would you like to pop on and say hello as well? You've got, it looks like a bit of a different background from Jennifer, which I love. Um. Right. My background, I'm, I'm excited to be here today. My background is in learning and development. I was a special education teacher in my first uh, career and then learning and development in business and in uh, not-for-profit. So coaching for me is kind of the capstone of, of my career. I consider myself semi-retired, but not, not really because the work that I'm doing now as a coach, I find that it's uh, so rewarding. I don't even feel like I'm working. So I've uh, been coaching for five years um, as a professional coach, but coaching has always been close to my heart and something that was integrated into my into my former career as well. So happy to be here and be able to give back to coaching out of the box. I'm coaching out of the box alumni, and I just love um, what you offer the coaching community. So thanks for inviting me to be here. Absolutely. And I love that. That is something that we hear a lot from our potential students and our students and our alumni is the one common denominator for sure is that we all want to give back. So it, it's nice to be in that role. So thank you as well for, for jumping in and joining us. My pleasure. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Renee is our first coachy today. And she is partnered with Jennifer as her coach. And I will have uh, Stephanie spotlight everybody in the background there. So let's see. So we are 11.06. And uh, Jennifer, you'd mentioned that you're good on timekeeping. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I will stop my share. Okay. And I'm looking for Renee to be spotlighted if that's possible. Oh, there we go. All right. Hi, Renee. 
Hello, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. You as well. We literally saw each other for the first time a few seconds ago. <laughs> but thank you so much for jumping in and being willing to be coached by someone that you don't have a relationship with yet. Um, and I want to acknowledge that um, I actually feel a connection to you already in some way. Um, and, and I hope you can grow that connection with me as we partner moving forward. I Wonderful. would love to just check in with you about the levels of confidentiality that are present here in this session. It is being recorded and there are lots of other people out there observing. Are, and are you comfortable with the, the stage that we've set here in terms of this? Yes, no problem at all, Jennifer. Thanks okay. for thanks for asking. Absolutely. And and if at any point something comes up and you you change your mind and you're like, mm, I'm not sure I want that included, we can go back and and take care of that. Um, and I also just wanted to let you know that I tend to take notes in the very beginning when we're establishing our agreement for the session. Other than that, um, typically I'll be very present with you and and in that way. Is that all right with you? Not a problem. I'm a note taker myself. Ah, all right. Kindred spirit there. Okay. Yes. Well, with all of that established, then what would you like to be coached on today? Well, thank you for asking. And it's a, a pleasure to coach with you. So I'm looking forward to it. There is, for my coaching topic, there is, it, life's been busy, as it is probably for all of us. Mm -hmm. And there are, I, I'm a goal setter, mm -hmm. goals and intentions. And I have something where I've got eight categories where I usually set my goals. And I've kind of, it, it's been busy lately and I haven't had a chance to really focus on um, what are some of my primary areas, just remembering and focusing in on what were my intentions in these areas. So there are eight areas that I usually set goals in and I've, I've, looked at a few of them mm -hmm. already, but I think there's three that I haven't had a chance to really think through. So I was hoping that in our session together, you might help me to kind of focus down on those three areas, which is health, spirituality, and life planning. The other five areas is career, financial, interest, development, relationships, I've kind of floated to the top some of my primary intentions there, but this health, spirituality, and life planning, I need to get a, maybe a reset or a refresher on those. Okay. Okay. So a reset or a refresher on your intentions yeah. within those three areas, health, spirituality, and life planning. What's an example of an intention that you already have set in one of those areas or a different area where you've got your intention set? Um, well, one of the things in career is it's an intention as well as I, I think I start with intentions, then I turn them into more of specific written down goals with some actions, but my intentions or goals under career is I've, I've just been part of the coaching out of the box program. And one of my career intentions is to start a coaching business. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my intentions, an example there, um, in, in relationships, I want to focus on my various roles and something that I can do within the next month for each of those important roles in, in relationships in my life. So those are some examples in those other areas that I've reminded myself of or, or refreshed. Okay. Okay. And so what I noticed about your attentions that you shared, they're very, they're crisp and very well-defined. It sounds like for you, like you're very clear what you mean by those. I like to, I, I've, I've always been a goal setter um, I, and I teach it in workshops as well. <laughs> okay. So I try and practice what I teach. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always do that well. And I always try and mm, be flexible as well with life comes up and again, what floats to the top when I kind of set these at the beginning of the year, I've forgotten them. Ah. I, I need to go back and think, 
where am I at in those areas right now? And, and maybe even over, I think this next three month period, Mm -hmm. what's important in those three areas for me for intentions or goals. Okay. So it sounds like that's a bit of an outcome possibly to our session. Yeah, actually, if I could, mm, if I could have maybe even one or two Uh um, intentions or the start of goals for those three areas that seem to float to the top in this next three month period so I can focus on them, I think that would be a great thing if you think that's a possibility with our time together. It's an interesting thing because <clears throat> I was actually running through my mind that that might be a lot to, to handle in, you know, now, which is, you know, something like 14 minutes. You have a strength though, that you're bringing to this. You teach this, you know what you mean by it. So that I think there's, <laughs> what if we set the stage that we'll see how far you get? How do you feel about that? That sounds perfect. Okay. I think I can probably focus on those three okay. from what you say. So thanks for, thanks for adding that. Cause yeah, yeah. I should be able to do this in our well, remaining let's see. time. So let's yeah, find out, let's right? See. Let's explore. Okay. okay. So one or two intentions or start of goals in each of yeah. these three areas <clears throat> that would pertain to specifically the next three months. Um, so you've already got a very specific outcome. Um, and so it sounds like a specific measurement of what, how you'll know we've achieved that if you have those one or two intentions, um, each of those three areas for the next three months. Anything you would add to make it more specific in terms of a measurement? I think I will jot it down with my notes because okay. I want to I wanna kind of combine these into maybe some kind of a visual that I can remember over the next three months as well. So mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that might be the next steps for me or something like that. But okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've already captured some next steps. That actually mm-hmm. brought me back to something I heard you say earlier, which is you said a reset or a refresher. Yeah. What's the difference between those for you? I had a bunch of brainstormed ideas mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year and then took a friend of mine on a bit of a weekend retreat and both of us were talking about our goals in our various areas. So I had, you know, things, ideas. Um, and I think the reset or refresher, the reset for me would be I haven't looked at them for a while. Okay. So it's time. Okay. It's time. And the refresher might be, we can probably remember a few of them, but what floats to the top for me right now? That's important. Okay. So it sounds like if we look at those pieces as we're exploring and playing, bringing them to the surface, that that would be important for your measurement. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. All righty. And then why now? Why this now in this session? (laughs) That's a good question. I think that's an important question as well. Um, You know, for me, it's fall. And I'm, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta right now, and it has been an amazing warm fall for us. So it doesn't even seem like fall. There's no snow on the ground yet. Uh, So it almost seems like it's a beautiful fall. And for me, it's almost like that back to school in the fall, gear up again. It's a good timing point. And things have been busy over this last several months. So this is a good timing point where I think it's time for that reset, refresh, Mm. refocus. Okay. All right. Lots of positive energy around. And there's a lot of (laughs) re's. A lot of (laughs) re's. 
<laughs> All right. Where would you like to start? Well, actually, out of those three, health, spirituality, and life planning, let's start with health because okay. it has been on my mind for a while. And I've, I'm just, you know, getting over a cold that I've had for the last week. So health has been on my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's start with the health piece of, and, you know, in health, I look at three areas and, and sometimes they connect to some of the other areas too. With health, I look at kind of a holistic thing, mind, body, and spirit. Mm. Now, excuse me, for me, with health, I think something that has been on my mind this summer, and I really want to kick it off now, I guess, or one of those re words, refresh, reset, refocus, um, is physical health. So walking, mm -hmm. walking, moving. strength walking moving strength come mm. to my mind for that mm -hmm. and you're nodding as you say that there's mm. i've noticed after the whole covid and working from home and sitting 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 i was doing some yard work early in June and I just can't do the stuff that I used to be able to do and thought I could still do so there's there's strength pieces that have gone down mm, okay yeah. yeah so this I've been thinking about this for a long time mm -hmm. so it's time to get re-serious about it re-serious okay you know earlier when you when you landed on strength you said it with more more emphasis as you came up with those three and then your story illustrated your realization that you perhaps lost some strength yeah yeah what intention would you like to set around that I want to think wisely about this rather than just set a, a goal that I can write down and check off. It's something deeper. And I think that's maybe where uh, I, there's some, there's some overlap between a goal and an intention for me of mm -hmm. it. This needs to be something important and deep rather than I will walk three times a week this far in this many minutes. I want to do something that's more holistic, more okay. from the heart, I guess. Okay. So when it comes to strength, I think this whole whole holistic piece because it's mind body spirit too is I want to do a variety of things that will affect my health in a positive way that includes movement and strength and and when you ask about strength the thing that comes to me that is kind of an important thing is yoga and okay. I've been playing around trying to create a habit this summer and it hasn't worked into a habit yet and okay. I think it's time okay how do you so want that, to express that for yourself that it's time and this is the thing I love yoga, yet I have not made it a priority, and I don't quite know why. I 
I need to try harder. That seems trite, but I think yoga needs to be one of a few things Mm. that I begin and use this three-month period to honestly create a habit bit by bit, not seven days a week all at once, but just bit by bit creating a habit. I think that would work for me. Okay. All right. So in in looking at our time, we are down to about four minutes and we weren't sure if we'd be able to get to all three. How are you feeling about the progress so far? Actually, this, this out of those three, this was one that has been you know, resting on my mind for mm. a long time. So I think it is, it just happens to have floated to the top to be that one priority piece. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy about spending even this much time on that one. Okay. Okay. All right. What did you write as your intention around it? I wrote some pieces. I've got yoga bit by bit for three months, starting with once a week. So that's what I wrote. Okay. In terms of what you wanted to have happen as a result of our conversation, how close does that align with what you were hoping for? I think it does. Yeah. I think it does, but Okay. I think there's a but in there. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I've tried it before. So that's where, and okay. it hasn't worked. And yet I think I've tried to do too much before. So mm. I think this smaller piece to start and to keep focusing and you know what I'm just gonna schedule it in okay I'm a little calendar creature as well so I think having that one day and Sunday will be my day Sunday will be my yoga day okay so you've got your action step and it's specific you're putting it in your It'll calendar. be my super soul Sunday yoga yes. day. Super soul <laughs> Sunday yoga day. <laughs> mm, nicely done. Right on. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm-hmm. I'm struck by the, you'd been trying to do too much. You'd made it too big. And even the beginning of our session, it was three things. And could that be accomplished? And your openness to saying, let's see. But you you allow the most important thing to rise to the surface and address it. You know, that's what I wanted to do of, I think that refresh, the reset, the refocus, what does rise to the top now? I, you know, I had a whole bunch of ideas and Mm -hmm. yet what is floating to the top? And thank you. Mm. That's been so helpful for that good what's the most important thing that you've learned either about yourself or about your situation in this time something else that has been important for me in the last months has been more of the holistic theme to life, to people, to myself. And I think this fits holistic rather than let's check the box. Uh Let's try and do more and more and more. So I think that is actually that deeper piece that I was talking about earlier as well. Okay. So thanks for asking that. Yep. 
Great job getting to something really important and meaningful for you. I honor your openness and your willingness to be true to yourself in this process as well. Thank you so much, Jen. What a joy to coach you. Thank you so much. And I, I'd have to say vice versa as well. Thank you for leading me through this. That's yes. it's an important piece. So thank you. All right. Yay. <laughs> Thank you both for that. That was amazing to see. And it's amazing that agreement piece, how long that can take. So thank you both for, for stepping into that. And I'm going to invite Karen on um, to do a debrief there. Hey, well, I, I don't need to do the first part, which was what a beautiful mm -hmm. way of getting that agreement really solid in the beginning. And, and, you know, I, I'll be honest, I was watching the time going, wow, this is taking some time. <laughs> And of course, it all magically worked out as it does. Um, so uh, after the the sort of the agreement, which continued throughout the session, you know, there was evidence of of reagreement, you know, throughout. But when um, Jen asked about what previous success do you have that you bring to this, and really acknowledge that this is what you do you know this stuff already so what is it really about and and she went deeper narrowing and narrowing it down why now like what's making then you talk yeah. you talked about fall and this idea of health and the covid situation where this was coming up for you that there was the noticing of what what had shifted and you wanted to come back to some of that vitality that you'd experienced before so and again, you know, the amazement of coming in, I want to do, you know, one, two, three, and I'm going in 20 minutes. And it, again, magically, if we trust the process, these things happen. But Jen did some things, um, I think, to help narrow that, uh, asking, you know, like, oh, you're nodding when you say that. I notice um, the strength is, is coming up for you. So she, you know, without guiding you, her acknowledgement and noticing helped you to narrow it down to what was most important right now. Um, and the yoga, you know, going back once that sort of, as you say, bubbled or floated to the top, you kind of realized that yoga took care of or touched on those mind, body, spirit pieces. Um, and then what is this, this intention, but, and again, that, that uh, coaching agreement, but what's making this important right now? So again, coming back and bringing sort of below the surface of that, that we're not just skipping along the surface about, oh, I want to set a goal about walking or as you said, that that would be too trite. It needs to be meaningful. Mm. Um, and so even at the end, after you agreed that yoga was the thing and when you said, yeah, great. This is it. I've, I've arrived. I've managed to do all that I was, was wanting to do. And then there was the, but, and I just love the way Jen just held that silence. She just waited to let you process. What is this? What is this? But what is this calling that's still leaving you unsettled? And it was kind of the, the below the waterline happened at the end when you said, but and it's almost like I always take on too much or to commit to too much or, yeah. and so being intentional then about what it was that you were able to commit to and feel really um, solid in that commitment at, at the very, and those, that was in the last two moments really of the session. So, I mean, what a joy to watch. And as we're checking off the ICF competencies, they're there. And they're, they're subtly and beautifully woven into the sort of natural flow of the conversation. So it really was a pleasure to watch. So, thank you. wow. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Ladies. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thank you all. And now I'm going to invite Ellie to come on with us. Okay. Hi, Ellie. Thank Good. you. And uh, Stephanie will be in the background there managing our spotlight. And I will leave you both to it. And Karen, would you like me to pop on at two minutes with a, a little verbal? Uh, yeah, I'm going to watch the time, but 
if I, I would love it. Two minute okay. warning, please. You so we're it. starting you... at 1131. And so we're going to 1151. Is that 1151. right? 1151. And I'll pop on at 1149 with a two minute warning. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. So Ellie, first of all, thank you to whoever's doing the technology that Ellie is right there in the middle of my screen. That's lovely because I feel like I can look right in your eyes. And even though we've never met before today and this session, I did have a moment to meet you just before the, the webinar started. And you mentioned um, we had a quick conversation about authenticity and honesty. And I was so grateful to hear you say, I can't fake it if I tried. And that that really my my angst about this camera and this webinar just relaxed because I felt like, well, I've got a, a, a soulmate, I don't know, but a real connection about let's just show up as if it's just you and I, even though we know this is a webinar, it's being recorded. Um, and, I, and, and confidentiality is the most important thing about coaching. And yet we find ourselves in this situation where we're setting that aside to some degree in order to be able to be authentic in our, in our coaching today and help other people recognize what coaching is all about. So I appreciate your vulnerability, your authenticity, and your willingness to step into this space and, and Allow me the privilege of coaching you. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Okay. So in, in honor of that confidentiality piece, just know um, that if there's a question that's not comfortable for you, you can say, I need to think about that, or let's, let's try another question. But you have full permission um, to only answer the questions that are comfortable for you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so what would you like to grapple with today? Well, um, you know, I've been struggling for the past, I would say, 60 days, maybe two, about four, eight weeks ago. Yeah, um, I made the decision uh, firmly and decisively that I'm going to leave the company that I'm with right now. I'm a managing director in a technology firm, and uh and I have, and, but I just, and I'm also um, owns, I have a partnership in it. Um, but it's clear that I'm not a good cultural fit for the organization. It's not what um, um, what I thought it was going to be when I left my other company to join this mature startup. And uh, and so here now I find myself in less than a year making the decision to leave, and I cannot shake the this 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 uh, thought that keeps gnawing at me is you know why am I quitting why am I giving up um, and and it's really I've I've been invited by one of the well actually the largest uh, technology uh, cloud services provider to interview for a role in that in the organization and there's a lot of prep a lot of work that needs to that goes into this uh, into doing it and preparing uh, for these multiple interviews I'm now at the third person uh, interview but I can't find the joy in it and I think that that's what I really would love to do I, I am a 100% people person, and I tr truly believe that. And and thank you for you know uh, for sharing uh, what I shared with you is just being authentic. And I really do feel that it's not it's not a word for me. It's not a buzzword for me. Um, and so that means first and foremost being authentic to myself. And and for some reason I just can't. I want to have the joy because nobody there aren't a lot of people that get an opportunity with this new company right that's potential uh, opportunity without me feeling just so um like such a failure mm. and so I, I i would like to get some clarity around that why am i feeling that maybe how to remove that thought uh so that's what i'd like to talk about today okay wow so there's a lot in there and and first of all acknowledgement that you're of your own integrity that you're not forcing yourself to do something that you know is not in alignment for you. Mm -hmm. And the courage that it takes to even have that insight and to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. 
So just for clarification, as far as what you're wanting to talk about, I understand that you've you've left, you've given your notice and, and are leaving the company that you're in. I haven't given my notice yet. I've made the decision to leave. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. I didn't clarify that. That's but yes. okay. No, that's I, why I want to make sure I'm understanding. No, thank you. That's good. Um, and then, so you've made the decision and you've been invited to an interview. Yes. So is the, the piece you want to talk about today, I, you mentioned quitting, being a failure, those kinds of feelings. Is that the piece that yes. is important for you right now? Yeah, no, thank you for asking. I'm sorry for the, um, so the clarification there is that what I really would like to best understand is, you know, I've made the decision and I know it's the right decision to leave this company. I've yet to give my notice, but I will um, because that's already, the decision has already been made um, there. But I'm also really quickly, thank goodness, right? I've had this opportunity where, you know, I had this reach out through my circle of influence and so I'm moving towards, you know, looking at possibly joining that other organization. But again, I'm in the early stages of interviewing process. There's that. But while I'm in the interviewing process and because I'm making this decision, for some reason, something is not settled in me that I keep feeling like I'm a failure. Like I made the decision, but for some reason, I'm connecting that with my lack of ability to have made it work. Does that okay. help? That, that helps. So what would be different moving into this um, interview process then if we were able to work with these, these feelings of failure and be um, successful? Great question. I think I would, you know, I think I would feel I, I feel like I'm missing joy right now in the process. I have, you know, there's, there's moments where I get excited about it. Right. And I'm, um, and, and, the, and, been, and I think I shared, there's a lot of prep work and studying in order to prepare for these upcoming uh, interviews and to proceed through the process. But when, when these thoughts start to come in, like, you know, why didn't I make it work with this company? And yeah, I'm, I'm putting all this effort and energy into these interviews. I, I get almost, I, I'm talking my sound out of, or I become demotivated. It's, 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 I've never experienced it in my life. Um, and, but at the same time, I've never joined an organization and left with in less than a year. I'm coming up to a year. And I, and I keep thinking if I, if I go two years, can I do two years? Can I do three years? But I've made the decision. It's not a cultural fit for me. Okay. So, so there's something about the way you're leaving or feeling when you're leaving that's interfering with you being able to truly embrace the interview process. Mm -hmm. Is how how yes. much truth is there to that? It's it's I th I think it's it's accurate. Okay. It's so. Accurate. So today, then, if we were able to work through the feelings you have about leaving, then that would probably, yeah, that'd that, be a great place. Uh, that, that would be success that, in my in my mind um, of this okay. conversation. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So in the in the time that we have, then let's say we are able to create some magic and mm -hmm. and grapple with these feelings and work them through, so that you're able to um, feel content with your decision to leave. How would you know at the end of the session that we were successful? How would you feel maybe? Yeah, I think I would, I'm pretty intuitive and that's probably why I've honed in on this element in my, mm -hmm. in, in my thought process. Um, so, you know, without just saying I would know, I think, I think what it will, it will allow me to release that thought. That's what it would allow me to do. And so I would have, I, I would know, um, it would probably be, um, yeah, I, I would understand, I'd have much clarity and that's what'll come. Yeah. So okay. much like the decision to leave, I, I have no doubt about it, right? No doubt. 
Okay. So it's a feeling of conviction then. Yeah. Would that describe it? That's good. Yeah, that's a good description. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think we, we're already saying what's important here is that in order to embrace the situation that or the opportunities that are coming up, you need to let go of this, these feelings of, of what you described as failure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what value is it that's that's coming up for you that is creating this or making making you use this word failure? You know, as you were asking the question, just a thought had come into my mind because I think that um, I think it's because. I'm almost leaving silently. I think that there are some wrongs in the organization. And I feel that, I think they, and, and, and believe me, they don't, you know, um, I think they've wronged a lot of women in the organization. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I feel like when I leave, I'm, they'll, they'll no longer have the voice that because I do step up, I do speak out in, in, in a loving and kind way, I, I, in a respectful way. But we've had two very senior women partners who've left the organization because they, you know, we have a seat at the table, but, but not a voice. And, and I feel like I'm failing them. This, you know, the women who are still there in the organization and others who are still in the organization that that are afraid to speak up or speak out. I think that's okay. why. Okay. Yeah. So uh, would mm. it be okay if I offered you a, a question or a reframe? Sure. Absolutely. Two for two for one. Yes. <laughs> so what if what if the opposite were true? What if your leaving was a way of empowering these other women? I never, I never thought about that. I, I think because so many of them come to me in, um, you know, uh, in private and I've been that advocate for them. And I've been that person who has, um, for lack of a better phrase, but, um, you know, talk them off the ledge you know, so to speak, when projects weren't going well or, you know, and and I, I think that that's the reason why I've only thought the other, but I didn't think the opposite. That's a good perspective. Okay. Um, so when you think about this idea of some leaving quietly, it seems to go up against your identity as being authentic and mm -hmm. honest so is there a way to reconcile this with these women that you feel committed to you know and, and it's not just women I, I'm committed to a lot of the team players and members here but um um I, I think um, I'm sorry, ask me the question again. I want to make sure I. So the question is, is there a way to reconcile this feeling of leaving silently with the people that you're committed to? I, I'd like to. I think there's a fear in the back of my mind and, and it is that, you know, uh, there is that element of not burning bridges when you leave. And I don't know who or what person could say something that could be, you know, um, misconstrued or, or misinterpreted uh, or misunderstood, you know? Uh, and I, so that's why when I think of leaving silently, I, I leave on a high note. Um, I leave with, you know, with bridges intact but I am fighting that 
that urge to just really, you know, just sit down and share, you know, the, the not so pleasant experience that I've had here at this company. And then I go back and forth, you know, uh, do I just not say anything and just keep moving on? I mean, it, it will it be helpful? You know, uh, you know, um, you know, we have that. Is it the truth? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? That's kind of our mantra in, in Rotary. And I'm, I'm on the, um, I'm a Rotarian. And, and so I, I keep going back to that. If what I'm going to say is, it, there's this one um, um, C-level executive there that's very, you know, he's, he's very loud and very, not so nice. And I've seen him in meetings. I've seen people give him feedback. I mean, it's just terrible, but he owns 50% of the company. So do, do I share that information? Do I share my real truth, you know, and experience here with the entire, you know, um, leadership team, knowing that that's going to be a reaction, that'll be a, a trigger point for him? Or do I just leave without having to cause that disruption? Okay. When you think about leaving without causing that disruption, how does it feel in your body? Psychologically, mentally, it feels right, right? It, I mean, intellectually, it feels like that's the right, you know, leadership stance to take. Um, emotionally, maybe not so much. There's a disconnect there because I do care about the people with whom I work and the and the clients that I've engaged and brought into the into the company, and so I feel this this debt or this obligation there, um, always to do right. But it's truly out of my control now that we're we're talking about it, Karen. I can't control what people say or do, right? So it's out of my control, and and so maybe I'm trying to to. Um, to solve both needs here and I won't be able to solve anything. So um, maybe I just give, uh, I, I know I'll have an exit interview, but maybe I give constructive feedback as opposed to truth to some degree. Not, not that I will not tell truth, but maybe reserve some of those much larger uh, contentious um, areas um, alone. Okay. I'm feeling a shift in your energy here. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Is it, is it from imagining the exit interview or from something else? No, I think it, it think, I think you asked the right questions because now I feel like, see, I was trying to please everybody, right. And including myself, you know, because I do think about my future. I do think about, you know, in, in, in risk and operations, there's this um, component and element called um, a reputational risk. And so, um, you know, when you build your brand and your person in, in sales where, you know, executive sale selling that I do, you know, there is a reputation that I hold. Uh, um, I, um, you know, integrity is of great value to me. I want my clients to trust me and I'm going to do everything I can for, for whoever's, you know, whoever I'm, I'm working for and serving. So I feel that I was trying to do both or maybe all three, the company, the clients, myself. And so I feel like now, actually, yeah, you know what? I actually now have clarity here, Garrett, because I can't do that. There's, it's just impossible. I can't do that. So I can only do what I can do best. And that is, is, um, is give an honest exit interview. I, I don't need to have a discussion with the entire um, leadership team. And I can still maintain my friendships with, with my colleagues. Sorry to interrupt, Karen. Just less than two minutes left. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so, so something about that exit interview shifted things for you. Yeah, it did. It, it really did. Cause I, I think up until now, I forgot that I was going to have an exit interview. <laughs> they, uh, you know, um, yeah, I just, you know, it's a formality, uh, that they just started incorporating. So that's great. 
um, probably because of some of the feedback they've been getting, perhaps, I don't know. Maybe I'll look into that piece, but but yes. So I will have an opportunity to share in a in a in a more um, controlled in a, in a controlled situation. I still feel the failure, though. I I felt the failure before, not as much anymore, because again, I was trying to I was trying to please everybody. When okay. you do that, so you please know them right. Okay, so so there's a lessening of the failure. There's a, a move towards, you're drawn towards some kind of action, which mm -hmm. sounds like speaking yep. your truth in the exit interview. Yep. Okay, so, so checking in then on a scale of one to 10, how, how much relief are you feeling as far as this failure piece? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably about an eight, maybe nine right now. So that's good. I feel like there's, yes, I, I do. I feel really good about, you know, my next steps here and, and how I can leave that behind, what I can leave behind and what I can control and what I can't control. So um, in doing this. I, I just want to acknowledge your energy right now, because until now you've been sort of looking up and, and you know, grappling. And for, for some reason right now, there's a, there's a feeling of solidness. Yeah, I'm seeing a confidence. So mm -hmm. if that's any indication of what you've been able to do for yourself in this space, then just acknowledge that. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Now, you know, I, as a leader, I've always been firm and decisive. So I've always been able to get to that point where I'm comfortable with my decisions, you know, and I, you know, and if I need to pivot, I'll pivot very quickly. This has really been such a long it's taken me much longer to get here. And you've been a great help just in hearing me and asking the questions that you, you, you've asked because there's so much behind that, right? There's so much more context here, but thank you. No, you're, you're right. You honed in on it perfectly. Absolutely a pleasure to, to coach you, Ellie. I'd, I'd love to have the honor of working with you again. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Okay. Okay, lovely job. And what I want to reflect is the dance that I witnessed between three of our core competencies. And they were trust and safety and mindset. And it's not actually a competency, but it's inherent within many of the competencies, which is partnering. I really felt, Karen, that you have just this deep understanding of what the, the true nature of coaching is, which is partnering with our, our coachee and really seeing that opportunity to co-create in the moment. What is this really about? What are we really exploring here? What do you most need? And I really felt that, that Ellie had that experience of feeling safe and that she developed trust with you very quickly and you trusted her very quickly. And that really al allowed her to go deep into some of these feelings and emotions that a lot of people would, would hold back right? And, and meeting somebody for the first time and being in this environment. So I really felt there were some great examples of how you created that trust and safety. So your acknowledgement of who she is throughout the session, I heard you talk about her courage. You specifically, specifically called out some values that she was expressing in stepping forward and her leadership function. Um, you, you had some great examples of reflecting for clarity, not just for you, the coach, but really reflecting for clarity for the client. And that's a partnering and, and being sure you're on the same page. Some of your language, Karen, work some magic. You said that in the moment. I was like, she just set the stage for great things to happen in just a few minutes time. Um, you, you echoed a feeling of conviction. You checked in on what was going on in her body. You talked about her energy and how it opened up towards the end. Um, you mentioned that you felt a shift in her energy. You felt it and, and saw it. So I've, I don't think I've ever seen a coach really hit on all different parts of who a person is in the midst of a coaching session. Um, of course, very open-ended questions. And so you were demonstrating that mindset of being open and flexible and very curious. Just, I just had this sense of just this kind, loving, 
unconditional regard for who she is, who Ellie is, and, and the situation that she's in, and that she she has it. You know, she has it. And she's gonna she's gonna move through this time beautifully. And I think that got reflected in her comment on the scale that moved up to an eight or a nine. I mean, that's a wonderful shift within a coaching conversation. Um, so I think that was about uh, the amount of time I had. I don't know if we want to then ask Karen or Ellie if you'd like to reflect something, but that's what really caught me. Thanks. No, I, Ellie was, I felt this real connection to, to who she was and what she was experiencing, this paradox of wanting to be responsible to these people that she cared about and true to herself and what she knew she had to do and how could you reconcile those so I was really relieved and grateful that she was able to come to you know a, a way of reconciling the two because it was really two values knocking up against each other for her but she was able to to figure it out so well mm -hmm. done Ellie yeah no thank you for allowing that space for me to be able to do that it was very easy uh, you know there was and even in the back of my mind there was so much more I wanted to share but I just really wanted to get to that place and I think I'm there um you know I think I only have a you know a couple more things that I need to reconcile but I think I'm going to be there it's going to be fine I that's what I have now I feel like I'm going to be fine it'll be okay nice. and now I'm looking forward to nice. continuing this this journey with this other uh company so uh so thank you very so, much that was so wonderful. good to hear in 20 minutes Look, we can, the coaching process is magical. <laughs> it truly is. You showed us that. Well, I think there was a desire. There was a desire for you to help me. And there was a desire for me to find. And I thought that was, and it just, I, I just was in the moment. I forgot we were on the web, <laughs> in a webinar. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, um, I, was, I, I was there with I you. And I am so wrong, grateful but, we were able, yeah. yeah grateful to be able to find that space and that safety even in this context so thank you wonderful thank you everyone thank you all and thank you um ellie and renee for stepping in like like you mentioned ellie for getting you're in a webinar that's amazing i'm so glad that you felt that com that confidence in the confidentiality and the trust even within this realm and for both of you coming with real issues which is really challenging at the best of times, let alone in this. So I really want to say kudos to both of you for bringing that to the table today. It really helps with us to see the magic of coaching that Karen and Jen were able to show us and how those core competencies interweave through the conversations. Like you both mentioned, that was amazing. Um, I just wanted to quickly touch on, I'm mindful of our time and we will stay on after uh, the top of the hour for any questions. Just a very quick, uh, let me just see here, what's coming up for coaching out of the box and what we have coming on here. There we go. We have got our fast track program starting next week. Um, I believe that's actually should be Monday, October 24th, starting next week. And that's a six month cohort that will get you on the doorstep, we like to say of your ICF application, as well as a la carte programs coming up and another diversity program that starts in February. Now, all of these slides will come to you uh, by email. So don't worry about that as well as the recording will come to you as well. Now, I just wanna open the floor here, again, mindful of the time, but if there's any questions there that um, any of our participants have that we can answer while we still have our coaches here. I'm going to look in the chat here. I've got a couple of things open. Now, Renee and Ellie, I know you both had an opportunity to pipe in there, but is there anything there that you felt really resonated for you or really helped unlock where you were at? I'd say for me, it was that space that Jen provided for me to think through things. I think that is one of the magical aspects of coaching, the space. Hard to hold, for sure. And what about you, Ellie? What would be one takeaway for you from that? You know, I think a takeaway for me here um, that that I think, Karen, you did very, very well, and, and I, I really appreciated was, and I think 
um, uh, Coach Jen honed in on that was just that 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 trust, um, just establishing that trust at the outset. So it didn't. I felt like it happened at the beginning. I, I just, I you know, you came without judgment, and I, I'm sure there were a thousand questions that you had in your head to ask me, um, to you know, to drill down. But I thought you just asked some great questions that that made me think further down. And that was important to me. That that really, um, for me, was a game changer. So that's my takeaway. Thank you. I'm going to turn off the recording, but one more word. Thank you to Stephanie, who always has my back in the background. And to the four of you for joining us.